and we are live. Good to see you today, my EOS podcast friends. I have the great and powerful Kevin Rose here from EOS New York. (laughs) Um, Kevin, welcome to the show, uh, a returning guest, because uh, we have some interesting conversations. So I look forward to hearing what's going on with EOS New York and just some general EOS talk. So, um, Kevin, go ahead and briefly introduce yourself, and then people know who you are probably. And then uh, what do you think is most interesting going on in EOS right now? Yeah, hey, everybody. My name is Kevin Rose. I'm co-founder and head of community for EOS New York. Uh, we are we were one of the first block producers to announce our candidacy in January of last year, and we've been fortunate enough to continue to produce blocks uninterrupted since the mainnet launch. I think um, only one of maybe two that are left that can that can say that. Um, so we're very, very proud of that fact. And um, thank you, Brandon, for having me on, on the show. Um, I always love coming on here to chat and, and yeah, there's a, there's, there's never any lack of cool things going on in EOS. My goodness. Um, you know, uh, one of the, one of the things that I am just so excited about is we're starting to see a lot of the work getting put into the foundation building of the space happen almost outside of the block producers, right? Like for example, have you seen uh, D goods? I haven't. I had that on my my list of things to look into, though. Actually, right here. What tell tell me about that? Yeah. So this is something that I'm super passionate about with EOS and blockchain in general. Um, non fungible tokens for mm-hmm. for many reasons, but for for me, I, I just think it's such a perfect thing for gaming, and I, I've talked about it many times before. But you know, it's a, a gaming 130 billion dollar business, and when you spend so much time grinding and you and you receive an item, you know, if you're playing Destiny Two or you're playing or you, you know you're going back to look at Diablo Three or whatever it is you're doing, you, you you get that item, you get that rare exotic thing, and and then you own it um, when you're using it on blockchain, a non fungible token. Fung- fungibility meaning, you know, for everyone watching, if you don't know what it means, it's the exchangeability. It's interchangeable um, is fungibility. So. Uh, non-fungible tokens, we need a, a, a standard, right? So these tokens can talk to different things. When If they move from exchange to another exchange on EOS, it's like it's easy to identify them. Um, if different wallets are interacting with them, it's just easier when we have development standards, right? So um, Mithril, Gaming, Scatter, Lynx got together and said, well, there isn't anything good enough, so we're going to build it. And then that's And that's awesome like they are building a standard um on eos and this is something that normally block producers would do right these open source projects so it's Mm -hmm. good to see the community taking charge of that so they're building an nft standard is what you're saying yeah and it's not the first one uh either um unico is they built another one um and i know that they were being advised by eos cafe block uh and d goods is this, uh, you know, they, they, they didn't, the, the groups that are building D goods didn't see what they wanted in the Unico NFT standard. I don't know specifically, but uh, so they said, okay, we're going to build our own. And, and they branded it, I think, really well, you know, if you, because on Ethereum, you've got ERC 721. Mm-hmm, right? Yeah. yeah. If you say ERC 721 to someone, yeah. They're like, what the hell is that? Exactly. So D goods, mm-hmm. I, I think it's really cool. That's yeah, that's brilliant. And D goods stands for digital. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, intuitively, that that yeah, what a, that's a great name. I mean, um, that's perfect. And and to have a standard there is going to be going to be fantastic. So if you if you were to have like different types of NFT tokens, the problem with the reason that we'd want a standard is because let's say if you were trying to trade a an item between video games, maybe a, a, a hat that you a cool hat that you have. <laughs> uh, let's say you want to trade it from one game to the other. Uh, if they're using different NFT standards, maybe you couldn't do that. So is that why you'd want one standard? Is that how that works? Um, so it's more like the, the way that I understand it is if you, for, to have just at a basic level, to have a wallet understand how to treat the token. Mm-hmm. Um, so many, many tokens on EOS will use the EOSIO.token contract, uh, but there isn't actually a token standard, by the way. There, um it, there, there's not a uniform way to to know 
what this thing coming at you is going to look like and how to how to talk to it, how to treat it uh, from a developer standpoint. And that's that's what the point of the standard is. And there are a lot of different facets way that you can there's it's attributes of the token itself and the way that it communicates out to different things on the blockchain about what it is that you want to standardize. So it's just easier to uh, to handle them really. Okay. okay. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. I, we were, if we any had, developer is listening to this and goes, that's <laughs> not right, Kevin, shut up. Yeah. Feel free to join our, our Telegram channel and tell me how I should be speaking about yeah. it. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll tweet out the, uh, the redaction and the correction for you. you oh, well, we will. We've, uh, <laughs> I think you and I both value accuracy and, uh, yeah, above all else, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, I'm not, I have to value accuracy because I'm making too many mistakes. So I've got to, you know, I gotta be transparent and, and, you know, let people, let people correct me. Well, um, perfect is the enemy of progress and podcasts. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. Exactly. That's why it's a live show. I just, you know, we hammer it out and figure it out later. So, yeah. Um, cool. Well, uh, you um, had a post recently about governance uh, on the t- oh, recent tweet. Um, you said the only thing that you would add would be that uh, BPs probably shouldn't be changing private keys. What, what's your kind of thoughts in general on where governance is at, where it's going? What are some sticking points at right now? Yeah, I think everybody is sort of sick of talking about it, right? Um, <laughs> until we can, uh, it, it's like this, this has been this 800 pound gorilla sitting in the corner of the room, just hammering us in the face. And every time we're having the same, you know, if, if you are out there and you're, in the telegram channels and you're involved in these conversations, you must be rolling your eyes right now because it's the same thing Mm -hmm. every day. It has been the same thing every day. Um, And it's the, it's the shortcomings of the, the, of the additional layers of governance that we put on uh, ourselves at launch that has bred this culture of paralysis of decision Um, block producers, even though they are elected uh, delegated authority by the equivalent of hundreds of millions of dollars are very, very afraid to make simple decisions as they should be in many cases, by the way, I think that they should be always thinking about, well, if I make this choice, will I lose votes? That's kind of the point, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but we need to, we need to move forward. We need to make decisions. I think everybody is sick of not making a decision. The referendum system is fantastic. Um, I think that there may be some misconceptions about how that's going to work. But it is excellent in that it can provide direct feedback and reinforcement to block producers on issue-specific decisions that they are faced with, rather than this kind of like, uh, you know, unattributable cause and effect of vote changes and you don't know what you did or didn't do or why did they vote for me why did they pull their votes away but this is much better of okay there are 25 million votes that say do this Mm -hmm. okay that's good i'm gonna go do it you know or or whatever it may be um but the misconception that i'm talking about of or misunderstanding about the way that this might work is this 15 percent threshold that we've gotten used to talking about Mm mm-hmm I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out a controversial idea. I've done this in a, a couple of Telegram channels, but this 15% doesn't matter. doesn't matter at all. And the reason why I think it doesn't matter is let's walk through a scenario of how it would work. Let's say, so 15%, right, of total tokens need to participate in a referendum. Let's imagine that we only get 14. Mm-hmm. 100% of all tokens voting say yes, but only 14% of total tokens in circulation participate. That's around 145 million tokens. And that exceeds by almost 50% the total amount of tokens voting for the number one block producer on the planet. Mm-hmm. So imagine you're a stand-up block producer and you <laughs> see the top 21 say, yeah, you know, sorry, we didn't hit 15%, so we're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. If, if, I'm, if I'm a standby producer, my, I would look at that and say, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. I'll do that. Just vote for me and I'll just do it. I don't care if it hit 15% <laughs> because at the end of the day, token holders can vote any way they want at any time for any reason without having to ask anyone's permission or explain themselves. Mm-hmm. So that's it. What we're, what we're going to see moving forward is that every block producer is going to have a personal threshold for every single issue. And at some point, each of them will say, that is enough for me to go, yes. 
Mm-hmm. And I, it'll, it'll depend on where they are in the rankings or what matters to them or their core competencies, you know, all sorts of things. But it's just another example of the way that the government's governance system that we've designed is, is just not helpful and mm-hmm. not reflective of the reality that we have on chain. Yeah. And, and do you know where that 15% number came from? Because it almost seems like if not arbitrary, not probably backed up by a lot of data, or it couldn't be backed up by a lot of, you know, historical data what yeah where'd that come from well i wouldn't fault the 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 people f- who chose the number because you know like you said with data what data like we didn't have yeah. the, the network then um i imagine it was certainly an educated estimate mm-hmm. but um you know at the end of the day it doesn't matter i mean no no number based based on the the, the example i gave no number is correct. Yeah, but it seems like they might be able to get a little closer now that we have, you mentioned the total votes that are voting for block producers. So it's almost like, okay, you take the total that's voting for block producers and then you say a percentage of that because then at least you have like a number of active votes and you're trying to get some percentage of the active voters. But it, but it doesn't matter because imagine if the, the 28th position is 9 million tokens behind Mm -hmm. nine million may be that threshold for that that standby they Mm -hmm. say i i need nine million votes to uh to be in a producing position and nine million just said to do that well i will do it okay so you're saying so you're saying it almost handcuffs the top 21 or the the block producers that are uh there because because there, but there might be kind of almost this desperate range where they're willing to kind of just go for it, while uh, yeah. while the others aren't. Okay. Um, I mean, it's 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 foolish for any block producer in the top twenty-one to say, "I'm safe." Yeah. Until until that hits fifteen percent, I don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. Newsflash: it can just happen to you. Yeah. You can be you can you can receive votes, you can lose votes, you don't know why. The referendum is a very good indicator of, like I said, issue specific things. But if the token holders want something to happen, they just vote for the validator, the block producer that says that it's they're gonna do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, no number matters. It's everybody has a personal number now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a yeah, that's a, that is an interesting way to think about the incentives that uh, you know one group is gonna be incentivized to be cautious basically and follow the rules as set forth. Whereas another group is going to be incentivized to not be cautious and just go for it because they need to grab some votes. Um, well, so. I, I don't even, I mean, as, mm-hmm. as EOS New York, we're not, so with this lens, EOS New York is not looking at referenda with the 15% threshold. We are, mm-hmm. we're looking and we understand <laughs> we, I th- we have done our very best to show the community that we are committed to adding value to the chain mm-hmm. and to and to doing a good job mm-hmm. in in many different definitions of what that means but the the rules set forth in this constitution are by and large bad poor poorly designed um, we've we've put together our own proposal for something that allows iteration and progress to happen faster and that's in the the eos user agreement um and it basically centers around the idea of block producers being able to exercise much of the abilities that they are already afforded as a top 21 block producer the the at the end of the day there are two mechanisms by which we govern the eos mainnet there are only two there are layers on top of it But the only two are the token holder stake weighted vote and the 15 out of 21 approval multi-sig transaction um, to achieve network consensus. Everything that's that, those are the two protocol level things. Nothing else exists on that same plane. Everything else is a layer on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, bigger picture, I'm generally in favor of, um, of, more more iteration more ability more kind of level ability to 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 change approach and just freedom to to try things because 
um, it's such a new space. I mean, that's, that's how EOS is going to push forward the most quickly is by block producers and developers and everyone will be able to kind of throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks and then keep moving. Um, so right. anything that slows down that ability is, is rough. Um, you know, you look at like something like Bitcoin and them trying to change the code in Bitcoin and these huge, you know, six month long debates. And then it forks into Bitcoin cash after like some weird agreement doesn't go through, you know, like, uh, it's that, that's kind of the model that we want to get be basically be the opposite of, um, is that slow moving, um, too much, too much governance and moving too slowly. So yeah, I tend to agree there. Since, since you mentioned Bitcoin, one of the things that I, I've been thinking about a lot lately is that EOS has been pitched and sold as the governed blockchain. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that any blockchain isn't a governed blockchain mm -hmm. because a, um, this is something that Brennan Bloomer said recently, which was that all blockchains are voting machines. Mm -hmm. You may vote by different mechanisms, but that's all they are. They're machines designed to allow large groups uh, that don't know each other individually to make decisions. Bitcoin is a governed blockchain. They govern through hash power. Mm -hmm. That is how they make decisions. The, the difference is that EOS is a better governed blockchain. And the reason why is that in Bitcoin, there is a delineation between the stakeholder, the Bitcoin holder, and the validator. The validator can exist without ever being directly influenced by the stakeholder unless there's some personal relationship and who knows what happens in, in those kinds of discussions or six month debates or whatever. But in, in EOS, you have a direct uh, line of accountability from the, the network validator, the block producer to the stakeholder of the network, the token holder period. It is the, the, the top 21 and not just the top 21, but every single reg producer EOS account is it reflects the 60 second snapshot of total token holder voting sentiment perfectly always that that is and, and now now there's a difference between there's a difference between calling governance like a failure right governance is working just fine it's a it's just a mechanism to arrive at a decision and that works that's a software but then many can disagree with the results of it and we've conflated the two we've mm -hmm. called so we've read headlines that eos governance is a failure but it's not it's working just fine the the part that they're calling a failure is the these additional layers which essentially serve to mismanage the expectations of people within and outside the community um and, and maybe the the lineup of the top 21 may be disagreed with by um but but to re the, the reality is, is that the, the, the voting token holders don't disagree with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is, it, it has hiccups and it. it has things that, but those things are trying to be solved. And one of the, you know, on that note, like the sister chains and the different chains that are popping up that think about and, and are testing some of these issues and, and trying to figure them out. Um, I think it's really beneficial too, because we don't have to test everything on the main net. You know, a lot of these things can be tested on sister chains and see how they work. So there's a lot of experimentation going on. Um, that's really cool to see right now. I, I plan on experimenting on boss. There you go. I, I have a, I have a governance proposal that, um, boy, is it going to take a lot of work for it to pass on EOS? And I think it will take less work for it to pass on boss. Mm -hmm. I think, I think it'll work, but it's got a, everyone's got to buy into it first. Um, so I, I plan to do that on the BOS chain. Mm -hmm. um, but these, first of all, sister chain is like a euphemism. They're all, they're all competing. It was Rob uh, from EOS Detroit calls them competing Ram pools. Okay. Which I, I totally agree with uh -huh. unless they're, unless their unique selling proposition is different enough that they don't really meet, mm -hmm. um, you know, in the world like Warbly and EOS, like, right. There's a, there's a, unique proposition by Warbly that the mainnet doesn't quite satisfy. Mm -hmm. um, but these, the existence of these chains, when we talk about disagreeing with the result of governance on EOS and in DPoS in general, meaning you, we don't like someone in the top 21, or we don't like something that's going on and we view it as corrupt, let's say, 
these additional, uh, these competitive EOSIO chains, business goes where it's most welcome. Mm -hmm. And if business doesn't want to be around corruption, it will leave. Mm -hmm. So these, these additional chains are going, we're going to reach a point of equilibrium where each of them, I think, are keeping the others honest. Mm -hmm. Because if you are clearly corrupt, who's going to build mm -hmm. in, your, in your corrupt city? You know, um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the beauty of, of all the different chains is that the, the market can flow to wherever, whatever ends up working. Um, right. And so it, it and is, right now, by the way, that's EOS. That EOS is absolutely, is, yeah. Is the biggest, baddest EOSIO chain on the planet by yeah. far. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, I mean, and all the dApps are launching. It is, it's, it's crushing right now. It's, it's really fun to watch. What do you think about the, uh, I know this is still far off, but now that it's been mentioned by Brendan Bloomer, the um, one token, one vote uh, idea, how do you think that would affect incentives? And, and Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it seems pretty clear that it would obliterate chances of cartelization, cartelization. Mm -hmm. But there, there's this really cool thing that, that I love about EOS and, and what, you know, I get to do every day. And that's, you know, working with people like you um, and, and, and collaborating with other block producers. I think that the, the, the actual token mechanics of voting, where one token is 30 votes, um, allows one... BP's success to not mean another's failure. Mm -hmm. If if one token can only vote for one BP, the likelihood that block producers get together to work on stuff and build something that's bigger than each of them individually are, mm -hmm. it, to me, it's, it diminishes. Right? Because yeah. now, now, you're, now you're competing for that one voter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that—that's a huge trade-off because that—that's something co really cool that you see within the community is that uh, something's being built. Let's say Shintai, for example, and they'll have kind of EOS forty-two, and then you know fifteen other block producers that are helping out, and they'll all be listed on the website. They'll all be kind of promoting each other because there's not necessarily an opportunity cost to doing something like that. But um, because you know all fifteen of us can get votes, but yep. that's a good point. You know if if. Uh, if someone, it, it incentivizes people really wanting to grab the credit for themselves because it's worth votes now that they might not get if they let too much credit go to a, you know, a co-sponsor or something. So Exactly. You um, know, a, a great example today, um, it was communicated out to block producers and standby producers in one of the groups that we all are on on Telegram um, where people were talking about uh, building reference smart contracts to start to instill a sense of best practices in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and um, Tal from Liquidios, who's awesome, um, he created a repo on, on the Liquid, uh, Liquidios GitHub and said, feel free to commit to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we will. But, it, but, but if, we, if everybody was all vying for one token, one vote, we'd probably see 30 of those. Mm -hmm. And I guess mm -hmm. maybe you could make the argument that that's better. Is it better? Is it worse that the, each of the repos now have to compete? But I'm always about the idea that none of us are as smart as all of us. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the main net is the reason why the EOS mainnet is so resilient is because it's like 40 groups of extremely intelligent people willing to help each other. Mm -hmm. And we, we can't, we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, so to speak, is that if the, the, the idea, sometimes we want to punish evildoers at the expense of do-gooders. Mm -hmm. So how can we protect ourselves without damaging the best part of ourselves? So my answer is, I don't, I don't know yet. I think it could very well eliminate how those cartels work, but I also haven't modeled it. I haven't done the math. Yeah. And you know, it, it reminds me of like when, uh, when we had the attack, the nine 11 attacks, and then they basically put the, now we, we, to this day, we have these TSA monitoring and all that. Then the airports suck. Are they though. back yet? 
Is the government I, still shut down? What's going on? I, I don't on know. I hope the TSA never comes back. I'm not sure though. I haven't. I don't. I don't watch the real news, so I don't know. But uh, <laughs> but but it's but it's the thought of um, you know kind of punishing the people doing good because trying to trying to it's it's like an overcompensation to me you know it's it's a little bit of a stretch there for an analogy but but it is like this overcompensation like we can't have this so now everyone's gonna you know be be punished this is why we can't have nice things yeah exactly whereas whereas like sometimes it's just there's going to be you know not everything's perfect so just what what's working best and so um yeah and yeah. And so, man, I need to think about that a lot more because I was kind of, I have been really uh, interested in the one, um, one token, one vote, but I hadn't really thought through the, those, those, those side effects of how everyone's working together so well that might not. And re- in, in reality, like what's the big deal if there's a few block producers that are up in the top 40 that shouldn't be there, you know? Um, you know, it's not, it's not ideal, but it's not really ruining the chain at this point. And we have a bunch of sister chains coming up. So we have other experiments. So um, we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, so you mentioned boss chain. Let's, let's talk a little bit more about that because I'm, I'm interested in boss chain. I think people would like to hear uh, kind of uh, the unique proposition behind it. Sure. So um, the idea is that it puts the, 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 app developer at the center of the conversation Mm -hmm. and one of the things that we wrote about in eos governance um prior to boss chain even existing was that that's something we need to do um so we were attracted to that and we were attracted to some technological endeavors that they were pursuing one being um, a very interesting decentralized way to uh, move tokens across chains um that's a cool thing that I'm that I'm sort of learning about how they're doing, because this because IBC is thrown around all the time, mm-hmm. and I I think people need to understand that IBC is a general term for one blockchain validating what's happening on another one. Mm-hmm. It's it's blockchains just proving to each other what they're doing, and that and that there are probably countless ways that that can be done that we're not aware of yet and and even if the the idea of simply moving eos tokens to boss or boss tokens to eos um and that's moving the token not even converting it just moving it so that it we all can prove that it only exists in one place at one time that may not be the most exciting thing but the progress should be celebrated Mm -hmm. um because that's it's going to be a it's going to be a discipline within EOSIO of how these chains communicate and how value is created from them leveraging one each other, uh, from one another, leveraging one another that is going to be a big game changer for EOSIO and and the EOS mainnet because we're going to we're going to watch everything plug in to the EOS mainnet. I mean, if you imagine. Um, if, if these IBC relays were set up in a way that then they had, for example, they took in a price feed from Bancor X um, and then, or, or from anywhere, I don't know, you run an Oracle with a price feed and then you have a bunch of those um, so that you don't have like a single point of failure, but you could have the EOS mainnet operate as a one, as a large decentralized exchange, a totally KYC free these decks just by way of, Oh, I want to exchange my boss into EOS. All I need to do at, at, you know, spot price market market value is just send it from boss to EOS. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, there's also testing that they're doing with uh, last irreversible block being three seconds, uh, which would be very helpful for dApps in the way that they, um, especially like just an example of why that's important for gambling dApps when they pay out something, uh, when they pay out a bet, uh, there have been a lot of vulnerabilities that have come to light of somebody being able to uh, manipulate their, their, their transaction, their bet um, prior to it being put into a last irreversible block, mm-hmm. meaning that it, it is immutable at that point. Um, 
and and they've they've stolen money that way. So this is reducing that time frame from three minutes on EOS to three seconds. Um, that that technology is certainly. I'm I'm really looking to the rest of my team, our you know our technology leaders at EOS New York to tell to tell me about that uh, because it's it's a it's beyond it's beyond me. I'm not a uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie about it. Um, but yeah, so it, it's it's an experiment right now. Um, we're we're writing a kind of a you know ultimate guide, mm -hmm. which is also helping us identify a lot of the things. One of the things is they have they have a a guaranteed minimum of CPU, which is interesting. Um, for your account, period. I don't I don't believe that that e exists on EOS. So it's 200, 200 milliseconds, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't I don't know exactly how that works yet. So I'm I'm still learning about it. We believe that there could be value there, which is why we decided to uh, produce on it or to divide to produce on it. We're not currently a block producer. I think we're like 25th or 26th, but um, yeah, it's also interesting seeing it from, uh, it's primarily an, uh, a, a, an Asian driven chain, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I would call EOS a primarily anything driven chain. I, I mean, obviously the, the English speaking community is very vibrant, um, but the boss chain the English speaking community that I could see from their reaction was kind of like, what the hell is this? Where did this come from? What's going on? And when there's confusion in blockchain, there, there's, there's accusations of criminality mm -hmm. or malintent. Uh, so that was interesting to see. Um, you know, I don't, I, we're, we're still forming our opinion on it. This is my answer. My, it's a very long answer to say, I don't know yet. Well, I mean, everything's so new. That's kind of the answer for everything. <laughs> so, um, yeah. what do you know about? Do you know it about their like their founding team or where it came from? That's that's one of the I think one of the like spots where there's not a ton of information that people have questions about. Do you know anything about their that? Uh, I do, um, and it's you know, one of their, one of the, one of the leader developers, I don't want to say lead developer, but one of the leaders in the development of the boss chain is, is uh, Win Lin from EOS Bixen. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It could be Bixen. Um, I've actually, it's one of those things, you know, when you don't say anything out loud ever and you just read it and then you have to say it out loud and you're not actually yeah, sure. Like half my vocabulary is like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, he, he certainly is a, um, he has made a lot of contributions to the development of the uh, boss chain. And I have asked him what the plan is um, for the boss foundation. That's a thing, the boss foundation. Uh, mm -hmm. If they're going to put up a website I mean, right now, the only way to communicate them is via email. Um, but, you know, I was told that the plan is to introduce that out to the community. Um, the English speaking community is kind of what I was asking about specifically. Uh, so there's not a lot of info yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we will monitor and see what's, what's going on. Um, but I'm pushing for that. I mean, and yeah. not that it's going to happen because I'm pushing for it, but you know, I'm pushing for it. I'm sure other people are. And I, you know, that's, that's kind of my, what I hope to get out of it is that so people, people know who's doing this stuff because they, mm -hmm. they, they have some keys right now that are important. Uh, the IBC contract is run by them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, the, they're working out a way right now. These, these, these transfers are automatically kind of approved, right? The, the, the IBC relay needs to like, uh, like approve it. Okay. And there, there are tons of permissions on it. Um, they're all named after planets. You can see them on, on like a block explorer. It's like Venus, Mars, Sun, Moon. And ultimately, the, the goal is to, is to surrender those to block producers, but to have um, EOSIO.prod's active permissions approve things automatically isn't uh, easy, um, or it just needs to be carefully considered. So it's important to know, like, okay, well, who has the keys to the smart contract um, that is enabling tokens to be locked up and for us to trust that they will only exist in one place at one time. Uh, if you're going to hold those keys, we need to know who you are. 
Mm-hmm. And if, mm-hmm. if you're, if you're, if you're not going to tell us who you are, you need to give up those keys. So right now it's in a stage of like testing, just working it out. Like it's, it's okay that they have the keys because they wrote the software and, and I say they, 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 we don't actually know who they is, but they, you know, they wrote the software and they need to just make sure it works. And then, and then you figure out a way to decentralize the whole thing. Um, what uh, what other chains are you guys supporting at this point? Um, are you doing uh, Meet One or any other ones? Uh, we're not doing Meet uh, Meet Dot One. We evaluated that and and decided uh, you know we we have we're all we're all startups, right? We're all um, privately funded companies, unless you're not, in which case, good job. But <laughs> No, I mean, I mean, we we want to remain 100% independent, 100% self-owned. Um, uh, where was I going with that? Oh, um, so anyway, so we have finite resources, and we need to properly, you know, and efficiently allocate them. So we we decided against uh, moving to meet that one chain. We didn't quite understand the um, the USP there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're on. So we're also producing on Warbly, like I said earlier, mm-hmm. and and we're participating in building out one of their uh, dApps, um, Token Oro, which is um, going to be doing a, like, a, a, like a standard token offering platform. It's a very interesting project where um, the, the value of the token is split between part of a gold mining business and, and actual physical gold bullion that is owned, that you have a claim to. So, uh, so great, great learnings there. Um, but yeah, I, I think we're, we're sort of, tapped out um for right now we would never want to overextend ourselves but we are we are looking to expand um so that we can just diversify you know our our eosio expertise and be able to provide the best value that we can yeah i yeah there's and, and there's probably a lot more uh side chain sister chains competing ram pools that are popping up in short order so it's um <clears throat> it's good to be have you heard of snacks? I haven't. No. So this is like a social media EOSIO chain. Really? That I, that I je- like. I saw in like two places. Okay, snacks. I'll, I'll have to look into that. S N A X. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think yeah. I read. I read a quarter of a press release, and I saw their Twitter profile. And, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about uh, Token Oro? Because that's, that's, I've seen that a few times. It's going to be launching on Warbly. Do you know, um, do you know when it's launching or how, you know, do you know any timelines on that? Uh, not that I can really share because, mm-hmm. uh, but we're, we're just, we're helping build. Um, we're, we're, we're helping from, you know, software and blockchain development. Um, aspect as far as like the actual business you know we're not involved in that in mm-hmm. any way shape or form so um we would not want to be the one to share those details that's up to those business owners mm-hmm. yeah that'll be cool I'm, I'm excited to see some some things start to launch on warbly that's one of the kind of most interesting um chains that's that's popped up and it's pretty well yeah. established so i think i think they're going to have some very cool things that are coming out um and and these are this is fintech kyc aml regulatory compliance um you know these are going to be investment vehicles and mm-hmm. standard token offerings and securities tokens and all this stuff it's very cool um, yeah. and and the the closer that that is to to the main net um and you know War, warbly has plans to work on a fiat gateway for eos and Warbly token and, you know, many EOSIO chains like that, that's, that stuff is why we were drawn to, to Warbly. Um, yeah. Um, well, Fiat gateways, I just saw that, I think actually from a tweet that you, your uh, EOS New York tweeted out that Binance just, uh, has a Fiat, just opened a Fiat gateway for credit cards. Did, did you, are you familiar with that? You see that? Uh huh. Yep. Um, hmm. Yeah, we, we thought that was cool to share. I think it's important when you just see any sort of, you know, and it wasn't about, um, I, they're not offering EOS right now, but mm-hmm. that's not why we shared it. We just shared it because it's a general piece of progress forward. Um, yeah. I, mean, so I imagine the fees are going to be pretty high. Yeah, for sure. I mean, these these really cool features, like one of the really cool features was when uh, 
uh, Coinbase came out with their credit card and you could just use your, you could basically spend your Bitcoin with a credit card. I don't know if you ever tried that, but it's like you, you really quickly realize, yeah, I got one. I, mean, I think it was called, what was it called? The Swift. Do they still have that? I probably, the fees are silly though. So like, you know, you're, oh. you're probably, I think you're, I was, yeah, I, I did it for like a week or maybe a couple of weeks and I looked, I was like, oh my gosh, it's like, you know, what was it, 10, 10%, 15% like of, of fees or something crazy. So, yeah, well, that's, that's ridiculous. So we're, it, be, we're, it became silly, yeah. So We're about to go through the exercise of establishing uh, some pavement gateways because the, you know, if we're going to build the best hardware wallet for the EOS network and you can't buy that thing with EOS, then we screwed up. So <laughs> yeah, for sure. we're, we're going to make sure that that's something that, that we offer. So we're going to have to, we're going to go through that exercise and understand the pain points of, of, of that um, piece of technology and hopefully come out on the other side, better equipped to improve it. Should we ever come across a project like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how far along are you on the, um, on the hardware wallet now? Uh, we are pretty far. We've actually, we've been pretty far for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, the, the actual, hardware, uh, firmware, the security of it, you know, it functioning uh, correctly and as expected, we've had for months. Uh, but there are many aspects to launching a consumer product. So um, we, we are taking on each of those aspects uh, from legal to packaging to supply chain to, you know, I mean, I can't tell you how many you know, 3D renderings of the, the mold or materials engineering. I mean, we're, we're, we're going, we are going through every aspect of building a consumer product from the ground up. We're doing it properly. And we are, we are building this um, through a secure supply, ch a supply chain in the United States. And we, we, we're sacrificing costs to do that, but we think it's the right thing. Um, By secure supply chain, you're, you're saying that you know basically where they – the soft or where the where everything's being handled so there's no funny business going on along the way you know it's not coming on a ship from china and disappearing out of your site for three weeks or something right yep it's all it's all in the the well it's not that 100 percent of all components will be made in the united states it's mm -hmm. that all it's that 100 percent of sensitive components so mm -hmm. the actual um you know circuit board that will function as the as the you know, meat of the thing is, is all within the United States. We know where it is all the time. Uh, we have access to the, the, the modules that helped uh, build it, um, you know, all of that. And then there's also the, you know, the, the, so it's funny how much time we've, we spent on building the technology, which was a while, but it works and it's worked for a while. And now we're, we're focusing on the 30, the 30 minutes that you have it, so you, you get it in the mail, mm -hmm. right? You open it up from that moment for the next 30 minutes. Every single little detail has to be carefully considered and engineered to make sure that the on, the, 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 from the moment you open it to the moment that you feel comfortable to use it, everything makes sense. Mm -hmm. Everything is taken care of. Um, you know, the user experience design of the use of the product itself uh, or, or the product is not limited to the use of the product itself. It's also when you get the thing. Mm -hmm. So we, we want you to be able to say, I have an EOS account on here with my private key. Uh, and this is my first time doing it. Mm -hmm. And that was fun. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds fun. That's how cool. I mean, that the whole it makes me think of like Apple products, the whole the whole every part of even the bag that you carry the box in like the that everything every part of it's just like this really fun uh, yeah and 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 we'll learn from this process i mean with the the metro we're not stop we're not going to stop there mm -hmm. this is we are we are this is our first entry into the space of user experience design for end users of decentralized applications this is what will help facilitate adoption of good dApps because this is, and it's something that doesn't get a ton. It doesn't get a ton of like mainstream attention, but the handling um, of private keys and providing uh, signed transactions to the blockchain from the user 
is a massively important aspect of all of this. Uh, and we worked on that with um, a piece of software we created called the Transit API, which essentially we were trying to build um, an open source standard, which we, you know, we, we spent considerable time, time and money on, which this is just like us reinvesting our block rewards back into what we offer the, the EOS mainnet. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a problem as a DApp developer, when you want to support a wallet, you have to go code for the wallet or, or any signature provider. And if there are five that are awesome, you need to go, you know, the burden, the, the, the cognitive load of making sure that you're supporting all these is, is high the amount of time that you need to develop for these. So what we're doing is we're creating a middleware layer where you code for that middleware layer as the DAP developer, and then each wallet simply builds a plugin for it. Oh. And, then, and then that you can connect there. Mm -hmm. So you don't actually have to really get to know, you don't have to go out and campaign for your signature provider. Mm -hmm. You should just simply be able to compete on how many users you have because your user experience kicks ass. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and, and that's it with that. Um, you know, Scatter is also trying to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're 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 trying to build a standard that does exactly that as well. Um, these kinds of things are important, and they, they don't get a ton of attention. They're not, they're not super sexy, but when they're right, you won't even know that that you won't even know how much work went into these things when they when they just work. Mm -hmm. That's what it's. But that's what we're all trying to get towards. Is is it just works? Yeah, that's we were, I was talking with Graymass about that yesterday or a couple of days ago, and uh, they were talking about a feature they're building. Basically, the auto it's almost just like the autofill feature where things populate themselves. That's not something that just happens because it's the internet. That's some that's an actual tool that people built. And it's a you know a, a part of you know something that has to be built on EOS too. So you know all these little that's a great analogy of a little thing. You know, I, I love it when I go to a checkout page and I click the first name box and it goes, would you like to just fill everything in? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. really would. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, it's, it's, a, it, it's those things that you just come to expect. It's like, it's the internet. It knows what I'm doing, but you know, the, yeah, well. the, it has to be, <laughs> it probably does. So, uh, no, but, does. Uh, um, but yeah, all these little things that are being built on EOS, it's, it's really cool to hear. I mean, teams like EOS New York and, uh, the other teams out there kind of doing these things. People don't notice it's not the sexiest, but like they notice subconsciously when they're just kind of floating through without having to, you know, without any, oh, yeah. points, you know, it's, it's a, and that's, that's what weird. block producers are for, right? We're, 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 we're building that, which, which cannot necessarily be monetized mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Um, EOS tribe, um, Eugene is doing a ton of work on history APIs. Mm -hmm. which are massively important for any DAP that wants to be able to go back uh, in history on, on the chain um, and access records of transactions, accounts, account history, anything like that. So, and these things are not cheap to run, by the way, running a full history mm -hmm. node not, is very expensive. I saw something about scalable history APIs by Defuse. Are you familiar with that? Um, yes. And, I mean, absolutely. EOS Canada is awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And they, you know, they're, they're building this, this defuse solution as far as how it distinguishes its, its, itself. I, I, I don't, I, I have not gone into it and then, you know, consulted with, with, with uh, our technical team to fully understand um, what makes it special yet. Mm -hmm. But I, I understand the, I, I, the, it is incredibly important to have consistent uh, access uh, to a, a functioning API node um, as ha that's how you can reliably uh, submit transactions to to the blockchain in many cases. So uh, yeah, I'm familiar with what they're doing. Cool. Yeah, so it sounds like EOS tribes working on uh, history nodes, Canada, uh, gray mass and uh, block matrix is also matrix. running. They run a, um, they run an API proxy. Okay. It's basically like imagine it's a load balancer on top of like a ton of other APIs. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're, we're in their proxy, for example. So it'll just go, all right, we're just going to send out traffic based on, and you know, what each of the nodes can handle and that kind of thing. We also, um, it was myself or not myself. It was EOS New York. And probably like nine other 
uh, block producer groups that funded this guy who's also building um, history node plugin. So ton tons of stuff like that is happening behind the scenes to make EOS better um, and provide a more consistent user experience. Yeah, and I heard that uh, EOS DAC, I think, also has a, his, a history light kind of version as well, where they run like a, uh, you know, a re more recent history and not the full node, but that's, that's something helpful. Is that EOS DAC? I thought I, I thought I heard about that, but I didn't know if it was EOS DAC. Also an absolutely great team. Yeah. Um, groundbreaking yeah. stuff that they're doing over there, mm -hmm. building, building a DAC. It's hard. <laughs> yeah that's that that one's like that one like starts to fry my brain when i start getting in like there's so much going on and i start getting into dax too and thinking through that whole model it's like oh my gosh this is just there's there's it, this is fun there's a lot going on man <laughs> it's 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 cool yeah um so your hardware wallet uh the is do you have a timeline on that yet that you can announce or is it coming sometime <laughs> yeah like, yeah 2021 soon no um i right now we're just we're just building a website so i hate pre-orders mm -hmm. as a as a former gamer when i had time it's like when you when you have these games that clearly are just there's going to be problems with them and everybody would pre-order them and it's like you just gave them all your freaking money and then uh -huh. you're just perpetuating bad behavior and the developer game uh -huh. developing um so we're, we're just we're going to put up a website to just do reservations um okay. you know if you if you, if you, and, and that's all, it's not a commitment of purchasing it. It's just, um, so we'll, when we do launch, we will give all of those who sign up a uh, reservation, like a full 48 hours, 24 hours of time. Like, Hey, it's available. Cool. We're not telling anybody else mm -hmm. for till on, for the next 24, 48 hours. Here's a link to purchase it. Um, maybe some exclusive offers in there too, but uh, yeah, it help us gauge demand. Um, but we'll have that up soon, soon. Cool. Uh, and then, you know, we're looking probably in Q2. Cool. And what's the, it's, is it an EOS specific hardware wallet? Are you going to have other coins on there? Um, how does that look? Sure. So this is to be used with, um, first of all, this is used. That's, I want to focus on that for a second. This isn't mm -hmm. like, we call it a hardware wallet, but it's not. Okay. It's something different. It's something new. The, the way that you interact with it, the, the way that you understand it uh, is, a, is just going to be a little bit different. It's meant to be used. If you want to lock your EOS away in a vault and you have, you know, 100,000 EOS, put it on Ledger. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. If you want to use decentralized applications on EOS, if you want to be a part of this, if there's, if you want to find value in the dApps that have built, this is what you would use, um, and it will it will be the easiest way to do so. There's no software to install. Um, there's a short onboarding process, and then you're good to go. Um, and that's it. Hmm. We, we we want this to be, you know, we we call it the EOS Metro. Because like the the metro, the subway, you know, you, you you put your you put your ticket in, and now you're free to roam about the city. And with with the EOS Metro, um, one click of a button, and you are free to roam about the blockchain. Cool, cool. I like that because I was <clears throat> I've definitely been picturing it as kind of a treasure or a ledger, like a place to safely and securely store it. I wasn't thinking of it as a kind of a yeah, it's just it's so boring though yeah, right it it, you know, <laughs> it, it, we're 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 not we're not claiming to have developed a new um security model mm -hmm. what we're what we're trying to do is make eos more accessible to the average user um and this would be for the average user who is security minded uh so yeah it's it's you could have both you could have ledger and metro um but if you got to choose pick pick the metro <laughs> yeah support support the ecosystem um yeah. that's that's really cool that's really cool i'm glad i uh, i'm glad i found that out because that that makes me much more uh much more interested than just uh just another version of the ledger or something so that's really oh cool. yeah no this is uh this will be fun and i i hope uh, you know i'm walking through back what i just said because i hope uh, anyone from the eos new york team if you're watching this right now i hope everything i just said is okay <laughs> uh, 
because we we work on this and then i go out and you know we meet you know meet with you brandon and we talk about it and then they go yeah hey, you were not supposed to share that detail I'm like oh all right i'm so excited yeah you've got you've got a short amount of time before i well actually you know what these are this is going out on tuesday so you've got if you if you get with the team and there's something that needs to be uh spliced then you can always no, no no it's okay i'm, <laughs> I'm walking back to my head yeah, right. yeah. um you guys are also going bare metal so um yeah. how's that looking and and yeah yeah, that was a long process. So uh, mm-hmm. we we started doing that um, in October, uh, oh, even prior to October, um, sourcing the location. Uh, we chose a location in South Africa, and the reason so in, in, at, at the mainnet launch, we we operated in the cloud. No secret, we were forthcoming about that, and the reason we did that is because. Nobody knew what kind of resources the main network would require, mm-hmm. right? And we believe that we, one, we are a startup. So being prudent and frugal is important for, you know, our own survival. But also we, we have made a commitment to reinvest our block awards and we're not going to do so in a wasteful way. So for those who purchased badass servers at launch and maybe never were a block producer um, or were just overkill, now those servers may may be paying dividends and that's great. Um, but at the time, we thought that's that's not it's just not necessary. So we absolutely will transition to bare metal um, when we've understood the kinds of needs that the mainnet has. So that was around October where we said, um, all right, we, we're going to look now. Uh, another advantage that we were afforded because we, we were patient was we get to look at a map. We get to look at it, look at the pattern of where nodes are producer nodes are distributed around the world and say, well, you know, latency is something that matters latency between producers when you're handing off a block. So where should we go that we can shorten the distance between us and the next block producer geographically and there was not a top 21 block producer node in africa so we chose um we chose south africa and actually one of our team members is south african so uh we we you know over many trips uh to south africa we we set it up ourselves not trusting anybody to do this we were there physically in south africa doing it um and we're live, and right now we are the uh, we're in the top three fastest um, block producers on the EOS mainnet in the top 21 per the EOS Mechanics benchmark graph. So it's if for anyone watching, it's unfamiliar. It's basically a a template smart contract that sends a standard uh, uh, transaction to each block producer, and then reports back the the cost. Um, the amount of CPU time required to process that. So, um, and then it can, and then it puts it all on a graph. So we we are in the top three of the, of the 21. So we're very happy with the way things have been going. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's great. I've, <clears throat> it's cool to see this, the whole ecosystem is kind of developing. There's been a few of the block producers are now moving to bare metal. It's nice to see um, from the community standpoint, kind of the resource, the block rewards being reinvested, the system improving, the latency, like you're saying, um, is improving. So yeah, that's 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 great news. So very cool. Um, you mentioned the EOS user agreement when we were talking before. Um, can you tell me oh, a little bit yeah. about that? Yeah. So we're trying. Mm-hmm. Basically, it is an attempt at uh, building a document for to describe EOS governance um, that it accurately reflects the reality of what we have. Um, it's, we wanted to devise the least controversial possible proposal uh, to replace the current constitution. Excuse me. That's why we didn't call it the constitution. It's because that, that word in translated into other languages is not, it doesn't mean the same as it does in American English constitution. Like, that's the, the backbone of the United States government, citizenship, the Bill of Rights, these essential freedoms. We see it as a very beautiful word. Others, um, other cultures can see it as a kind of moral 
um, a, a moral claim to authority or it's, it's more mm. inflammatory. It doesn't mean the same. The point is, yeah. so we changed it to EOS user agreement. We removed everything that could possibly be seen as controversial and um, just the basics like here's what we need to function and then al allowed a clear path for um, revision. So if we did want to, for example, the reg producer agreement um, in the EOS user agreement has absolutely nothing in it. It says you understand as a block producer that you may be removed by 15 out of 21 um, top 21 block producers at any time for any reason. Ever. just throw it out there so that all the times it's like are we compliant are we not compliant when you know if if the majority of block producers think that uh, the activity of another is threatening the network we don't need to jump around about you know is this compliant or not just go mm -hmm. and and we can learn through hindsight um, or by whatever we encounter uh, about what we should write explicitly in there. But right now it's just 15 out of 21, remove anyone for any reason at any time. And if you're out there, you're thinking, well, oh my gosh, well, if the bad block producers get in, then they can just remove people. One, they already can. Uh, if that, that power's there, whether there's a document declaring it or not. Two, if there are 15 out of 21 bad block producers, we're all screwed. So... <laughs> Moving also, chains anyway. Huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It also doesn't matter. So it's just like what we're trying to do is this culture of decision paralysis. Like I was saying earlier, it's about setting the correct expectations within the block producer community, within the token holder community, within the future token holder community, which is if we have our way, everybody else on earth, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the amount of flack that we got at launch by people who saw the EOS constitution and said, that is ridiculous. <laughs> it was a lot. Um, had we launched with this, I think we would not have had that reaction. There's no mention of dispute resolution. Uh, I don't think that that is a protocol concern. I think the dispute resolution is between two consenting parties to an agreement. Um, and that's perfectly possible by you leveraging the native EOSIO permissions features uh, to the software, in the software. There is no mention of referendum. Not because we shouldn't have referendum, but, but because there's no reason to mention it. It can simply exist and token holders can simply vote and block mm -hmm. producers have their own threshold of what they would do based on the number of votes that come in for any individual issue, like I was saying before. Um, so these key differences it's create a document that effectively manages the expectations of the token holders about how this works, how this actually is working now. There's one addition that I do want to add. Um, and we wrote an article about this called um, approaching immutable architecture for dApps on EOS. Basically I checked out the bet dice token contract today, just on a whim. Um, and they have one owner key for the token contract. So despite it being a decentralized application uh, spread across 21 distributed ledgers on validating nodes, uh, they have one over owner key that they can use to unilaterally change the token contract, which is worth essentially millions of dollars for tokens spread all over the network. Now, first of all, I want to say that they are doing a fantastic job. I do not think that they're going to do anything bad, but it, we, we need to understand that for, for this to achieve the kind of goals that we set out to, creating a decentralized application platform where I as a user don't need to trust the developer to use it, we cannot persist in a state of total mutability where sensitive smart contracts are concerned, e.g. token contracts. So what we're proposing is a symbiotic relationship be established between trusted entities, third parties within the ecosystem and the owners of these uh, sensitive smart contracts. Essentially, you create a multi-sig um, arrangement where the threshold to updating any of these sensitive smart contracts is that two owner keys, for example, I'm gonna simplify it, must agree consent to that change. And that can be done between 
if I'm a developer, Brandon, you're, you're the person I want to share it with. Um, I just do it that way. But there's also eosio.prods, which is the account that block producers assume to make uh, changes to the protocol, right? It's when 15 out of 21 get together, they assume eosio.prods active permission. Um, that takes 15, right? So if I were to share my owner key in a multi-sig arrangement with eosio.prods active permission, I have essentially put the, the threshold to update my smart contract on par with the same amount, uh, the, the same threshold to update the protocol on which it sits. And that's a powerful thing to say. That's a powerful thing to say to the users of that DAP, right? Where you reach a point of maturity, where you, you are now like, I need to communicate that I'm relinquishing control and I'm doing so to the single highest possible way I can short of being completely immutable of knowing out my keys so that, um, so that I can be trusted without having to be trusted. And there's actually multiple permissions there too. Sorry. Um, I'll stop blabbing in a second, but there's, there's active there's so 15 and then within this, within the EOSI.prods, there's also major, um, um, prods dot major prods dot minor so it's 15 11 and 8 okay so so based on what you need to do uh you, the use case of your dap you know if you're if you're i'm just gonna say crypto kitties if you're crypto kitties you don't need to have blockchain protocol level thresholds right 15 out of 21 you could do eight or you could do three if you want to choose specific ones and and by the way this is a paid relationship okay so this is this is work that mm-hmm. block producers are are doing um, this is value, um, and I'm working out. This is an SLA. This is a service level agreement that Reg Producer, you, that this is a service level agreement between EOSI.prods, which is managed by whatever, whoever the top 21 is at any time. So you can send to it when you sign Reg Producer. And then there's Reg DAP. Reg DAP is a new idea for a smart contract where um, if you want to engage in this kind of relationship, you must sign Reg DAP. And that that is the... Um, essentially this SLA, the service level agreement, which serves as a Ricardian contract between RegDAP and EOSI.prods for this um, shared permissions relationship to move DAPs toward immutability. Yeah. And end of rant. That, that, that's fantastic. I hadn't, I hadn't heard of that at all. And uh, in my first, the first question I was going to ask you answered was, um, the mental load for the block producers, but if it's a paid, if it's a paid, um, you know, if it's a paid SLA, then, then that makes sense. They can pick it up if they're ready for it. So, um, this was the thing that I was talking about experimenting on boss first. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's less okay. activity. Um, there's, there's, there, I, I think it's just easier to implement a test there. Mm-hmm. Um, before the mainnet, because it's gonna. You're, you're right. What what you're thinking is correct. Is is these are some of these are big organizations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but what but it's interesting here is now you introduce a new dynamic for enforcing BP standards. That if the expectation is that um, not everyone every time needs to review these changes and sign sign them off sign off on them, right? But if you're never doing it. If a block producer is never participating, mm-hmm. let's say that that ends up slowing down a, um, an update and a DAP says, you know what, this isn't worth it. And they simply unregister, unreg DAP, right? They're, they don't have to pay anymore. That is, and, and now you're costing, you're costing block producers money. That's when they look at the other guy and they go, okay, <laughs> you're going to get your shit together or, or you're out of here. Yeah, yeah. So now it's it's it hit it's kind of like this is this is the incentive that we know everybody can get on board with is you know you hit them in the purse and they pay attention. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so that's that's one of the that's something that you're going to possibly be experimenting on, boss. It sounds like. Um, yep, and hopefully EOS hopefully. Uh, if it works. I so I've written the basic service level agreement, but it's 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 identifying the actual deliverables. What mm-hmm. What actually are block producers reviewing? Because is it is it security audits? Probably not. It's probably just like right now. The only way I can say it is they're 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 ensuring that they aren't doing anything shady. Yeah, 
Well, but I, mean, I don't know how to put that in words yet. It's more, yeah. I mean, you don't want the block producers necessarily have to understand all the nuances of the business and the DAP, but you just want to make sure they're not, you know, liquidating all the accounts and, and sending it, you know, to their own private account and shutting them, you know, something, something wild. And that's a, you know, that's like one of these underlying kind of tones that you hear people take, take when they're saying, Oh, well, yeah, isn't EOS all gambling DAPs? Like, like there's this kind of suspect activity going on with some like, you know, evil casino. That's like, that's where all the transactions yeah. are coming from. So it's like, it, 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 it gives more legitimacy to the, to the already kind of looked up, frowned upon casino aspect, which is, which is cool. Um, and then for in every other, and to, and to all there. those people, to, to all those people, um, you know, thank you. No, thank you for, uh, Oh, can you, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, that's giving me an unstable thing. Yeah. Um, thank you, no thank you for your moral judgment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, and, you know, cause, because the blockchain doesn't care. The blockchain no. doesn't care about your, your moral judgment. Um, don't use it, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's, we're, we're in a voluntary um, system here. It's, it's a wonderful thing. So, um, the, so as we wind down, I just want to touch on on one last uh, thing here and then give you some final thoughts, obviously. So if you have something you want to add, um, I'm really interested in uh, meals possibly coming up. Uh, what are your thoughts and do you, what's, you know, where are we at and what do you think is going to happen here? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm actually under NDA. <laughs> are you really? No, no, I'm just oh, I was like going to say, okay, hold on. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to stop recording. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so what do I think? I mean, I, I, I think that, I think that there are certain things block one has done where they've, they've shown that their designers are very good. I like them. Um, and I think that, I think they're going to make something really cool. I mean, <clears throat> Dan Lermer built steam it. Mm -hmm. And then he saw, you know, he saw what he liked after he built it. He saw what he didn't like. And then they built EOS IO. It's like, there's, there's nobody more what better equipped to build this product than them. I, I think it's going to be so freaking cool. And if they are able to combine it with some of the other, you know, rumored products that they're making and not rumored, but just like, you know, what's the timeline? I don't know. It's block one. They can do it on their own time, but mm -hmm. the using, using this, like if, if Mios is an iPhone app that uses, um, fingerprints and you know face print um as decryption to your private key which is in your the secure enclave element <clears throat> in your iphone uh, you know that would be cool very cool Just flat out <laughs> I, I i i hope they do something like that and i hope they airdrop to the eos mainnet yeah uh, that's, it's gotta be the thing like right now that I'm just most kind of hoping for and excited about because I was a huge Steemit fan. I still am a huge Steemit fan, but, um, but I'm really hoping for something that kind of, uh, something Steemit like, but better. I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, and you know, one of the cool things about it was about Steemit and I was a Steemit witness and I was, I was bad at it cause I'm not a tech yeah. guy. So uh, I wasn't a good Steemit witness. I was just, I just did it cause I loved Steemit so much. Uh, Showing up is half the battle. Man. Yeah. Um, but, uh, what was cool about Steemit is like everyone was in one place. The whole community is in, is on one platform talking. It's not this dispersed thing where, you know, a thousand telegram channels and in the steam witness channel, there was this real organized, uh, like steam it witness, basically like node talk or tech talk. And then like steam it social or excuse me, witness social, where it was more of the outline things it was this real organized place, um, which would be really cool for block producers specifically to have a place where everyone can come together, where everyone is together in a centralized, like agreed upon place all talking because it's a, uh, it's really distributed. You know, there's lots of different block producer groups, lots of different places that we're sharing ideas. So, um, that's the, one, the only thing that that sounds difficult. The reason why that sounds difficult is just because of the different languages. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when we look at global community, yeah. Korea uses, uh, I have to look it up. Is it cacao? Cow cow? Cow cow mm -hmm. talk? Um, I'm sorry if you 
are Korean and I just ruined the name. <laughs> Find them in Telegram. <laughs> yeah. Or, or, you know, in, in uh, the Chinese community, community in, you know, I don't like saying Chinese community, the community in China mm -hmm. um, uses WeChat, we use Telegram. So uh, it would be great, but language will persist as a barrier to total organization. Mm -hmm. Damn you, Tower of Babel. <laughs> I was just going to say, yeah, well, that we need the Tower of Babel app to do real time um, translating for us in like in some massive chat someday. So have you have you tried that yet on uh, Google Translate? I haven't. No, have you? So there's a um, there's a conversation function. Really? So you can you can have two people talking at the same time, and it picks up both languages. Wow. And then what's it doing? Is it, is it uh, giving you a printout, like, a, like it's showing you text or it's repeating in the other uh, language? I th it, well, both, oh, depending, wow. on, depending on the way you do it. I mean, mm -hmm. not both at the same time, but just yeah. depending on the way you do it, but it's, it's super cool. Uh, that's fantastic. Wow. That'll, that's a kind of game changer for something like travel. Um, you can just oh, go yeah. into that. <laughs> I think the same app, you, you put it on a sign. And it can just translate the sign right there. It's it's. I mean, it's fantastic. Wow, well, brave brave new world, man. This is so fun to be part of uh, the blockchain and EOS and, and just ever all the tech cool stuff tech stuff that's happening right now. We got we're in some changing times. It's fun. Um, cool. Well, as we wind down, you got any final thoughts for our EOS podcast friends out there, Kevin? Um, vote on referendum. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it's going to hit fifteen percent or not block producers are watching they're listening and they care we all i care we all care you care we care what you think mm -hmm. uh, because we want we want what you want we we want to what the, what the token holder wants um so that that's that's one thing um second thing is be on the lookout for eos metro when we put that website out there that will be fun um and yeah, we're, we're going to be throwing some events. If you're in the New York City area, we're going to be doing a series of events um, this year, hopefully one by the end of February, depending on uh, some of our guests. Um, and that's it. You know, I really appreciate you having me on. It's always a pleasure. Absolutely. Well, my as podcast friends, remember to download the podcast version too, so you can listen while you're supposed to be working because you can't watch YouTube at work. So do the podcast. Um, you know, San Francisco block producer, we're doing all kinds of interesting stuff. Check that out. And I've got a proxy, um, build together proxy with the number two build together. And, uh, we're all about looking for block producers that are, um, building with each other. That's what's something we talked about today. So, um, that's it. That's the end of the show. My EOS podcast friends, absolute, absolute pleasure having you, Kevin. And, uh, until next time, cheers. The money is not the prime asset in life. Time is, and uh, your time is just a